You're listening to The Root Chamber, the show for every believer. This is Fenji streaming live from the U.S., Texas to be specific. Good morning, America. Joining me today are the members of the Roof Chamber crew, Ed, Jell, and Elaine from the Philippines. Hello. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming back. Hey, I'm Jell. Hi. Excited to be here always. All right. So today we're going to be talking about uh, taking refuge in the Lord. And we are blessed to be joined by a very good friend of mine yeah. and a dear brother in Christ. He's one of the hosts of 700 Club Asia. He's a veteran journalist and a television and theater actor. Friends, please make welcome, Mari Kaimo. Hey, everybody. Yay. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mari. Good morning, Thank you everybody. so much. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation, My bro. Pleasure. I know you. Uh, I know. I know you're. Uh, you're. Uh, you're having a very uh, uh, busy schedule. I don't know if uh, you know what's going on, but I'm still glad that you were able to accept this invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you for the pleasure, for the for the privilege, and the honor of being on your third show. <laughs> third show, yeah. I, I know this is going to be. I can look back. Someday in the future, I'm going to be saying, hey, I was on the third show. <laughs> Another show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew them before they were huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. But as you can tell, uh, like most of the rest of the world, although the Philippines, I don't know, it feels like we've been under ECQ or uh, enhanced community quarantine, and now it's modified enhanced community quarantine for longer than most of the, most of you in the U.S. at least. And we're yeah. still under it. You guys are coming out of it already. So I, I don't think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually, as I mentioned a week ago, um, the state of Texas, at least, uh, we're moving towards phase two of, uh, you know, uh, the lifting of the uh, uh, shelter in place, which is what lockdowns are referred to around here. So, okay. so we're doing great. Um, there's been some uh, opening restaurants are opening at 25% capacity. And, you know, I think, What's going to open next are the uh, uh, movie theaters. The malls have already opened, but you know, of course, there's always uh, the social distancing, wearing of masks, and right. you know that that's encouraged. So, right. but uh, but they've been very compliant so far. For what from what I've seen, anyway, uh, most of the country until maybe last weekend, yeah. when uh, some malls decided to open. I, it felt to me like everyone was uh, pretty much obeying, except again, oh, yeah. the last weekend when <laughs> the mall was put in. Someone's already come up with a report saying the mall didn't make money. The mall yeah. that, that opened up, the malls that opened up, didn't make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they were probably just curious, you know, after being cooped up for so many, so hey, many I'll go weeks, anywhere. You know? <laughs> Please yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's just it's yeah. just cabin pe cabin fever right there, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just shaking off shaking off the cabin yes. fever. So anyway, Mari, uh, we're going to be talking tonight or today tonight in the Philippines yep. about taking refuge in the Lord. And um, so, I guess my first question for you is, what's been keeping you busy nowadays? Nowadays, uh, of course, this has been. Um, Earth-shaking for all of us. I, yes. I don't think there's anyone in, right. <laughs> in living memory that's been through anything like this. Mm. So our entire world has shifted uh, where, uh, as we were talking before we started the show, we were saying, uh, I'm part of a teleserie, and that had to completely grind to a halt. Mm -hmm. We had to stop taping, and uh, it actually stopped earlier, I believe, than, than others because... We had our lead, one of our leads, one of our uh, male leads, uh, contract COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. That's Christopher De Leon, mm -hmm. and uh, and so we had to go into a 14-day isolation. Mm. Uh, all of the cast, because when he went into the hospital, mm. and he did not go in for COVID, he went in for, I think he said it was his rhinitis. Mm. Uh, but he he now suspects. Of course, you know, it was early days. So it's like we knew hardly anything about COVID. There was just everything was flying. Information just flying around. You didn't know what to believe. Mm. So and thankfully we had, um, uh, I don't know if you can call her an epidemi epidemiologist, but she was a, an expert on this, Dr. Susie Mercado, advising the, the cast, mm. especially when we found out that boy was ill. No? Mm. And so he went in with rhinitis and he was really feeling sick. 
but he mm. now suspected he might have contracted COVID while in the hospital. Whilst he was having himself checked with a rhinitis. Yeah. Wow. Of course, uh, the immediate suspicion is you have these uh, symptoms and the symptoms are very common among a, 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 within a broad range of diseases. So it all could be COVID. So that's mm -hmm. what uh, probably confounded his doctors for a while. But uh, while he was there, he was found to be positive. And that's when he sent the alert to us. Mm -hmm. says, okay, guys, you, you need to take precautions because I have I've been... Uh, found to be positive. And so mm -hmm. that's when all of us went into 14-day isolation. At the time he uh, announced it, I had a cough. Zian Lim had a cough. Oh, no. And so we were like, oh, what's going to happen? And so the doctor <laughs> was very, very, very calm. She's done this before. Uh, <laughs> she was saying, okay, let's uh, wait and see. If you're still feeling uh, ill uh, after two days, then you go and have yourself checked. And I'd gone through the whole schmear, which is call the DOH, uh, Department of Health uh, Helpline, and, yeah. and tell them what your symptoms are, tell them what you're going through. And they advised me, don't go to a hospital. Mm -hmm. Because uh, unless you have had the doctor check you out and the doctor is really concerned that it might be COVID, that's the only time mm -hmm. that you go in and that's uh, under strict guidance. They'll isolate you immediately. Don't go into the ER and mm -hmm. contaminate everyone there. We were taking the proper precautions, uh, mm -hmm. as far as I can tell, nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, 14 days was uh, tough because I'm I live in this home with my 92 year old mother and yeah, wife. That's, high, that's high risk. Yeah, high so risk. Yeah, I had to stay away from her for the 14 days. After which we went into ECQ. Like you know, so but we were of course thankful. And by the way, another um, proof we feel that uh, Boya did not have. COVID going into the hospital was the fact that none of, none of us ever caught it. None of us oh, ever came down with it. Okay. Yeah. The okay. entire cast. And imagine how the, the cast is large enough. But if you add the crew, because we were, we were, everyone was exposed. If you listen to some doctors, you're even in the same room as the person. You come into the room hours later, you can still catch it from the person. You know, so it sounded like it was so easily uh, catchy, so contagious. Mm. So it, it, she should have infected. Many more if he really had yeah. it. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. But, yeah. bro, uh, Mari, um, I guess my next question was: uh, my next question is, um, what was going through your head the moment you found out that Christopher De Leon was tested positive for COVID nineteen? Did you, you know, that were there? Was there an anxiety attack, or were you going through like? Uh, did you panic? Did you question the Lord? Uh, and you mentioned earlier that you probably had some symptoms, like you, you were coughing and all that. So, you know, it's just very hard at that very, I mean, at that particular uh, point to determine whether, you know, the symptoms was COVID related or it was just a regular cold or flu. So what was going through your head at that to particular be, time? To be honest, I'm not one who gets sick a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I have my my allergies and all that, and then blood pressure, I feel that occasionally. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm still at the stage, or I'm okay, I'm a senior now, mm -hmm. finally hit 60, but I'm still at the stage <laughs> where I don't think like I'm going to get sick. I'm not the, mm -hmm. that kind of person. I don't focus, oh, I'm going to get sick. I'm, gonna get sick. I'm, not, I'm not a hypochondriac by any means. Yeah. So <laughs> I was not concerned that I was going to get sick. My immediate concern was my mom and my wife. Mm -hmm. and everyone else here. So uh, it didn't really bother me. Uh, I, I wasn't really all that concerned until the stories start coming out of these 25-year-olds and 22-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. They're dying because of COVID. Like, uh -huh. Okay, if he's 22 and he's you know 25 and he's really, really sick, I'm 60. So yeah. Still, there was a little more of a tension there, uh, more, more, uh, maybe stress in the background, but it still did not consume me. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know, but I, my take on it is the fact that, uh, and this will, this will really go way back, but uh, my motto now is to be careful what you pray for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, but I was still working. <laughs> I was still working for ABS at Studio Twenty Three. Yes, right. Um, 
I was I was at the stage where I said, okay, I'm tired of this. I've been doing it for 18 years. I really want to go into ministry. So I said, yeah. Lord, last two years, I want to go into ministry. Mm. And I want to do it full time, but you have to take care of me. You have to fix everything. Mm. And then suddenly I lose my job. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah. They, they let me go. I said, okay, this is not the way I wanted to go. I wanted to plan my life. Right, you know? right. So that was a catastrophe. It was a total disaster for right. years. Um, struggling where to find uh, how to how to go uh, survive without a job, without a steady right. job. Right. Um, you lost your job because is it- they let me go. Okay. They decided. I don't want to speak for the station, but um, they decided. I guess uh, the story was that they wanted to go younger on the station, and I was uh, the mm-hmm. oldest guy there. Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> but that was that was an English speaking uh, newscast, though, right, Mari? If I if I if I remember yeah. it correctly. Yeah, and as far as I know, uh, salespeople were telling me we're making a ton of money for the station. Yeah. Right. But, <laughs> but uh, who knows what, uh, what they were thinking? They decided right. they wanted to try a younger, um, a younger news team. Mm-hmm. Our argument was: Look, uh, if you're trying to get ne- younger people to watch the news, they don't. Mm-hmm. Younger people don't watch the news. It's just mm-hmm. the older demographic that watches the mm-hmm. news. Mm-hmm. And but because um, decisions, the decision, the issues, the decision was made. There's nothing mm. to do about it. And mm. there I was very comfortable. So, oh, I'm Mari Kaimo. Mm. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. going to hire me. Certainly, I'm sure there's somebody out there who will hire me. Mm-hmm. Nobody did. Okay. I, I couldn't understand it. I was just in limbo for the longest time. Right. That, was, that was a real struggle. That was mm. a real difficult time. Uh, I'm getting somewhere with this story, okay? Uh, mm. During that time, uh, I was in touch with my former light man at the station. Um, and uh, he he was telling me, okay, look, we, we both got, because a whole bunch of us got retrenched. All, a whole bunch wow. of us lost. And so this guy says, I lost my job. If uh, And I was talking to another station at the time. He says, if you get your job at the new station, don't forget me. I said, yeah, sure. He was a good a good light man. I said, yeah, of course, I'll, I'll bring you in. And that station never hired me. So he was, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't have a job. He didn't have a job either. He wound up going abroad. Uh, into the, to the Middle East, and mm. soon enough, I'm still getting messages from him. But this time, he's he's talking about why do you believe the Bible? How can you believe the Bible? The Bible's contradictions. The Bible says mm-hmm. the Bible's full of errors. He had gone. Uh, he of course he was in the Middle East, and so they began to try to convert him to Islam. Eventually, he did convert to Islam. Mm. But while he was getting there, because I was the maybe the only Christian he knew, um, he started asking me questions. And it came to a point where I said, okay, I can't, even ask, keep, I can't keep asking my pastor, how do you answer this? How do you answer yeah. this? <laughs> yeah. he, he's too busy for this, right? So I started yeah. to have to do my own study. Right. And that was in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So I've been doing this now. I, I, it actually brought me into apologetics towards, for, wow. towards Islam is what brought me deeper into the word. This guy had been challenging me. Why do you believe what you believe? And mm. I'm telling you, when, when you're faced with questions you've never been asked before, yeah. it can really shake your faith. That's true. Yeah. It can really shake your faith. You're, 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 you get a question, you say, okay, I don't know this one. <laughs> it was the beginning of a long list. Of, <laughs> it was the beginning of a long list of questions of I don't know the answer to this one. But mm-hmm. the more I studied, the more I discovered that the, the, the Bible that we believe in, the Bible that we put our trust in, man, it is so deep. You are standing on rock solid ground when you, mm-hmm. when you believe in the Bible. Exactly. And, and of course, it was years until I got there. Then uh, about, uh, I forget now what year that was, but the pa- our pastor, senior pastor, one day in church, he challenges everybody. Okay, he says, we, it was at the beginning of the year, he says, okay, everybody, Let's do something. Let's set a target for this year, church. Let's this determine that we're going to go through the entire Bible in a year, this year. Mm. At the same time, En Chang and I had signed up for uh, the church seminary. Mm. And so our pastor, our, the uh, teacher in the, Bible, in the church seminary was a PhD. His, his, mm. uh, his forte was, I don't know if you know him. 
<laughs> there goes the poster behind you. <laughs> I know that's. I was really so distracted, but that's like my Star Wars. I mean, Star Trek poster, and for some reason, I don't know. It didn't just. Yeah, I Did tried to move? hang. I tried to hang it properly, but it's not. <laughs> Didn't, so much for thumbtacks. Then, then, then work. It's so much for thumbtacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so we were Andrew and I were in uh, church in the church seminary, taking seminary classes, and at the same time, pastor issues this challenge. So he says, "Okay, let's go through the Bible uh, from from now until the end of the year. Let's 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 say let, you know, let's decide we're going to go through the entire Bible." And believe it or not, by that time, I've been 25 years in the Lord. And I would wow. estimate I had been through the Bible in 25 years, maybe five times wow. in 25 years. Wow. What an embarrassment. 25 years in the Lord, and I've only gone from, from, from cover to cover with the Bible five times. That's, <laughs> okay, once every five years, okay? Yeah. But because um, I was debating with Muslims and be, with people who... Um, people who... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that, that's your <laughs> ma, ma, Mari, that's, that, that's that's your version of my Star Star Trek uh, poster. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't know who she's biking at, but anyway. Okay, so uh, well, where, where was I? Oh, five years. Okay. Debating. I was debating Muslims and I didn't know my Bible. I felt I didn't know my Bible well enough, so I said, "Okay, you know the the U version Bible app." You, you, it can, yeah, you it version, can read yeah. the Bible to you. Yeah. Okay. So I determined the day that pastor said, let's all go through the Bible. I said, okay, I'm not going to go through the Bible once for the, in, in a whole year. I said, I'm going to do it four times every year. Wow. Wow. Through the Bible wow. four times every year. Wow. My mistake was, <laughs> my mistake was that I made that vow at the same time we were taking seminary class. <laughs> okay. Oh so I was like, the readings in class are like 10 chapters Crazy. per, yeah, per yeah. topic, you know, per, yeah. per subject. So it's so like I was, we were taking about like three, three subjects. It's like, you know, the, the reading was in, a lot, a lot. Okay. So I, my estimate is by the end of the first year, I figured I'd gone through the entire Bible seven times. Wow, because of seminary. With, like, wow. with the four, with the four wow. uh, that see, is amazing. Using the U version app. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, you're washing the car, you're washing the dishes, you're cooking, you're listening. You, know, so you can do it during all your downtime. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's somehow it's still getting into your head. So mm -hmm. um, so I I've been doing that ever since. Uh, when 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 I sometimes I'll shift to just the New Testament. I go through the New Testament. Uh, there's a New Testament um, in 90 days. No, no, sorry, 30 days. But so there's a short version of the New Testament, and then there's a go through the entire Bible in 90 days. That's a lot. That's still a lot. Okay. But uh, thank God I was able to do that. And and I, this all has a basis. Okay, not only has that helped me a lot in debating because now um, I know more of the Bible than I ever did. You know, right. 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 Uh, right. Right. But it also, uh, you know how. Um, it promises in Romans that uh, it, you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. Romans twelve. I, I see. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming from there to go here. Uh, once you get the word into your in your mind, it goes into your heart, and you understand what I, I was saying earlier. What a solid foundation you're mm. starting. You've got mm. the Bible. Mm. I wasn't anymore. I'm getting to the point where. You can. Um, you're looking at it from a larger perspective. You're not yes. cherry picking like you were before. You don't yes. pluck out a, a verse. Oh, that's, that's what this verse. Means. Context means a lot more now. Right. So right. You're gonna Correct. Get to the point where Ephesians, and I know what the Ephesians. You know what Ephesians is talking about. It's like, um, um, but all I have to say this. Um, combined probably with uh, struggles during those years after I lost my job. Mm -hmm. It was God's timing, really. It really was God's timing, putting this together, mm -hmm. uh, giving me something to be focused on. And at the same time, it's scripture that is feeding my soul. All of that 
is coming into not just the debating, but into day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. Once you understand, not just that you're secure, because in your salvation, what I'm, what I'm saying is if uh, you know the word, you know on what basis you're saved, Right. You understand what Jesus did for you. Right. You understand what he went through to get that done for you. Mm. It's, yeah, it, it makes it so difficult to understand people who walk away. Mm. It just, mm. I, I just can't, cannot grasp. It, you cannot know this much about scripture and then choose to walk away. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've, I've laid all of that as the background for here comes COVID. Mm. And I can tell you, um, uh, and I shared this on the 700 Club Asia, um, there was no immediate fear of death because I know where I'm going if and when, mm. I'm not if and when. <laughs> well, no, Jesus could come back during my lifetime. So maybe if he's still there, but if not the if he's no longer there. But when my time comes, I know where I'm going. Mm. Not because of anything I've done, mm. but because of everything that Jesus did for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. So, mm. since there's no fear of death for myself, the immediate concern is everyone else, and that's what. Um, yes, correct. Yeah, but, uh, this this idea of um, you guys in the US are calling it sheltering in place. Yes, this really cannot have come at another time. This really, uh, we have Muslims who've been saying, "Why aren't your pastors out there praying for COVID to go away?" Mm. All the time that they're saying that, all the time that they're doing that, I'm thinking maybe God doesn't want it to go away. Okay, mm. if you understand my meaning, it's like mm. this: this all has to have a divine hand Definitely. moving, because mm. the timing. Even in Israel, our, our messianic brothers and sisters in Israel are saying it came during Passover. Yeah, never, mm -hmm. two thousand years, never since the, the Exodus. Has Israel, all of Israel, been forced to lock themselves up in their houses and celebrate Passover? Is that a coincidence? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> I really don't think so. At mm. the same time, the feeling of Hebron, if you remember mm. uh, where Joseph's family moved, mm. uh, uh, where he eventually settled his entire family, and, and mm. where all the Jews were when. God was sending the plagues on the Egyptians. Hebron was the one place that was safe. As long as you had the blood on your mantle, right? Yeah. You're, you're safe. But Hebron was the peaceful place. Mm. There was something in my spirit, is the best way I can describe it. In my spirit, I knew that we were safe. We were somehow, imagine being out of work and yet you're provided for. Yeah. How does that happen? Okay. Mm. Mm. I didn't do a thing. It's like, I, I'm not exactly the best financial planner. They, okay, I, someday COVID could come and we could all be locked in my house. You know, you, you can't get out. And what do you do then? You know? Nothing of the sort. I, I, right. It's God saying, I've got this. There's no need to worry because I've, I'm in control. Mm -hmm. It was the people outside, the, the poor people, the uh, uh, our gardener, uh, the landscaper, and her family, they, they were the ones that immediately came to mind when they said lockdown. Mm -hmm. so, okay, we had some money still, and money was still coming in, but I'm mm -hmm. thinking, this guy, the gardener, mm -hmm. makes 700 pesos a day. If he doesn't take home 700 pesos a day, his family's not going to eat. Right. The, right. the landscaper, if they don't sell any landscaping, they don't eat. Mm -hmm. I only met her and maybe one other guy, two other guys that were working for her. Turns out there were six families there mm -hmm. in that in that one in that one store. Mm -hmm. So it's like they were the ones who were, immediately came to my mind. So okay, what's going to happen to them? So mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, I was able to round up some friends. We were going to make sure that uh, we were trying to make sure anyway that they were they continued to eat during that right, right, during right, the lockdown. right. Uh, I'd like to jump into what you just said uh, about the fact that, you know, um, you mentioned about the Passover, the COVID-19 happening at, during the Passover. I was, I was in, in Israel probably, I don't know, it was three years ago. I remember during the, uh, we were in Jerusalem uh, during the uh, Sabbath 
And like literally, I didn't realize that literally the whole of Israel right. was sh- just, yes. it, it was on shutdown yes. pretty much. You right. know, we had like, as soon as I entered the hotel where we were booked at, um, they, the, uh, the guys from the hotel, the management led me to the service elevator instead right. of the regular. Cause like, you know, there's, you know, it's just <laughs> weird things happen during Sabbath that, you know, if you're not Jewish, you don't really you're not right. really able to comprehend, but of course that's their thing, and you have to respect yeah. that. Right. And 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 so you mentioned this uh, uh, COVID nineteen happening uh, during uh, during the time of Passover. Now let let me pick your brains, uh, Mary, on your thoughts about where we're at right now in terms of scriptures, in terms of the prophet uh, the the prophetic. Uh, where do you think are we at right now, scripturally speaking? You could not have asked a better question, especially as we're, right. we're doing this. Okay? Right. I was just reading it as a headline, I believe, from CBN.com, that uh, people are saying that we are on the, the verge of a major revival precisely because of shows like you are doing right now. Mm. Praise God. <laughs> um, it's, it's no longer, and maybe that's, Partially the reason why God is taking home people like Ravi, Nabil Qureshi. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like these, Luis Palau is ill. He's still mm-hmm. with us, thank God, but he's very ill. But it's like it's, God is not counting on the big names. Yes. In the last days. Yes. I, yeah. I, I want for the people who believe we are definitely in the last days. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has just brought the whole idea home for me. It's just... Mm. Like we were saying, it's like, how many more signals do you need from God to say, mm. uh, hello, um, I'm trying to wake you. Uh, it's, an, it, it's, the, it's the entire concept of every, the, the pews should be empty. The pews uh, should be, should be uh, uh, empty because everyone is out ministering, just like you guys are doing right here. Mm. It, it, the technology is could not have come at a better time. Of course, that's all also part of the plan. It's mm-hmm. all together. Is all of this is working so that we can reach as many as possible? I don't know if you noticed the post that uh, again. Sorry for the shameful shameless plug. CBN.com again. Yeah. Uh, no that's worries. why I mentioned Luis Palau because they have a goal to reach a billion souls. By what is it? Um, what what what's the event on Sunday? Uh, by uh, I forget now. But Sunday. Uh, is it something Sunday? <laughs> Sorry, I'm re- lousy at the church calendar. But anyway, <laughs> a billion souls ag- and again using this technology, using yeah. uh, not just Zoom, not just uh, all the other uh, conferencing platforms, but every possible Facebook, etc every possible media. They're challenging all of us to get out there and let's reach a billion. Mm-hmm. I don't have the figures uh, easily uh, with me, but um, uh, I don't know if you've heard these figures before. There was uh, something about during the time of Christ, during the time of the disciples, the uh, ratio of non-Christians to Christians was something like a thousand to one and how that's that's been dwindling over the years. And uh, that was shared by uh, missions uh, head of um, mm. uh, of the denomination Fenji you and I were with, yeah. um, and many years ago. And I got a chance to catch up with mm. him some years ago. I said, "Can you update us? What's the latest? Where, where are we mm. at now in terms of how many to one?" At the last time I had spoken to him, he said it was something like six to one. Mm. He says it's cl- probably closer to uh, like three non Christians to one. Wow, two Christians to one. Wow. If these guys reach the Palau um, project reaches the goal of a billion, mm-hmm. then, hey, <laughs> yeah, two to one. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so the that's technology true. is here. Um, if 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 everyone is willing, not everyone needs to know the Bible well. All you need to know, I mean, you, what you guys have been teaching, what the church has been teaching in Sunday school, mm-hmm. uh, four spiritual laws. If you want to use that, that's mm. enough. Mm. You go out there armed with that, you're good. Mm. You don't need to be a Rabbi Zacharias. So yeah. it's nice <laughs> to have yeah. more. Yeah. Rabbis. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, you know, um, as we were uh, introducing you earlier and we, we were ter- uh, talking during the uh, first few moments of the show, um, uh, I think uh, our producer, Elaine, was uh, running some pictures uh, f- for the streaming. I saw a picture of you and Ravi together. Uh, what was your impression the first time you met Ravi Zacharias? And, and you know, uh, every, like, I was really sad and I was shocked when I, yeah. of course, I, I was expecting it, but, you know, you can never be prepared because he was like, he was a hero of mine, one of my evangelical heroes of great apologists. Uh, Billy Graham was a great evangelist. Ravi Zacharias was the great apologist, you know? So yeah. what was your impression, your uh, impression when you met Ravi Zacharias for the very first time? I was, I was, um, uh, we were doing, uh, this is the third year now of <clears throat> Manny Pacquiao's and Senator, Senator Manny Pacquiao's and Senator Joel Villanueva's National Bible Day program. Mm. Uh, mm. They got it enacted into law. This is now the third year where we, every last Monday of the month is National Bible Day. So January is National Bible Month. Uh, mm. yeah. Over a, in the Philippines. Over in the, the Philippines. Yes. 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 And so, um, I'm guessing Manny brought in Ravi and he brought in another, you should meet him, you should have him on your show as well. Yeah. He's another tremendous testimony, um, Bishop, uh, I'm sorry, not Bishop, the former Prime Minister of uh, Ethiopia. Um, oh, yeah, 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 I, I heard of him, yes. He was here and uh, Ravi was here. Yeah. And and I was one of the MCs together with, oh gosh, who was I with? Miriam Kemba. Mm. Am I wrong? Mm. I think it was mm. Miriam, okay. Okay, she's gonna kill me. <laughs> but uh, we hosted, and Ravi was the main, spe- was the keynote speaker. And um, the, her, one of his aides already told me he doesn't like to be called doctor. Please mm. call him Ravi. It's like for us, you know, I you raised in the Philippines, you never do that. that is, yeah, you don't do that. <laughs> Karen Davila was. Uh, they got her to host the interview <laughs> segment. Yeah. And Karen was the usual typical on, yeah. on um, you honor the guy, right? <laughs> yeah, he worked yeah. for his PhD after all, right? Right, exactly. And, uh, you'd call him sir, and she would do that, you'd sir and Dr. Ravi. And I was like, don't call him Dr. <laughs> <laughs> say, just say Ravi. Yeah. Uh, and so he's just so humble. The guy is yeah. just down so to earth. Down to earth. He's, yes. What you see is what you get. What you right. see in the videos, that's Ravi. That's yeah, Ravi. So, Right. It was just an honor. And I was just, I, I, mean, I was one of what, a thousand people there. He comes and shakes my arm. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. starstruck myself. Of like, course. Yeah. And yeah. like I was telling you earlier before we started the show, I said he was looking very well. You look at the picture, he looks well. But he was already complaining about his, uh, his right. health. He was not happy. Right. A condition he had been suffering. He had had spinal surgery, and, and can you imagine someone? Who, I think it was spinal surgery. It was something with his back, something mm-hmm. to do with his back. For someone who has to spend so many hours on airplanes, you know, traveling mm-hmm. from place to place, that is just excruciating. I'm sure. Of course. Right? Oh my goodness. So yes. It was really, yeah. uh, and the guy just went everywhere. And right. here we are, months later. He was just here, and then we're hearing that. You know, he's, he's very, very ill. And mm-hmm. then to see that picture with Margie, it's like... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's a it's, loss. That's it's a loss. tough. It's tough. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe, Ed, do you have any questions for Mari? Uh, questions. Hey. Um, <laughs> let me think. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me just revert back to... Uh, the time that you were on quarantine. Now, uh, how long did the show run, Mari? Uh, I, I, I believe the title was Love Thy Woman. Is that yeah, correct? Uh, yeah, Love Thy Woman. It started, yes. it launched in uh, February. I don't right. remember the date. And when, when did you okay. suspend work due to COVID-19? It ran for a little longer than, because uh, they ran with whatever uh, they had in the can. Uh, whatever episodes they could complete, they ran those already. But we we had stopped taping. We stopped taping as soon as we found out about Boyet. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Right? So and this was before the lockdowns. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Right. That's why right. I said we went into fourteen days of, days of isolation. Uh, mm. ABS was not about to send us back into taping. <laughs> yeah. 
isolation. So yeah. that was not going to happen. Then there was talk about going into quarantine. Or that, if, yeah. I, if the timeline is correct in my head, anyway. Yeah. So it ran for a little longer, and then oh, we were already in lockdown. I said, okay, I'm so glad people. Are t- <laughs> I'm so glad yeah. we can still have uh, Love Thy Woman, and then it goes. You know, we right. were out of episodes. It, we were right. already in lockdown when it stopped. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I'm curious as to what your reaction was on the 14th day of your self quarantine, <laughs> knowing that you didn't have any, you didn't experience any symptoms of COVID-19. Of course, you mentioned earlier that there was coughing and all that, but your doctor was very calm about it and saying, you very reassuring, I guess, uh, that, you know, uh, you just have to, you just have to wing it and just try to observe and all that. But, uh, observing the whole thing, not having to escalate to what most people would dread, uh, like, you know, having to uh, bring yourself to the hospital and perhaps the possibility of, you know, getting attached to a ventilator or something. On that 14th day, what was your reaction that, you know, finally, this is it, I'm not having any symptoms? (laughs) I had actually been pestering that doctor, and she's she's not the only <laughs> doctor. <laughs> she's the presidential advisor on what is it now? Some health uh, thing. Right. So, but she just happens to be my son's uh, uh, godmother. Okay? Right, right. <laughs> we go way back, and there so I was go. texting her two days before. I said, "Doc, two days to go." I mean, I was pestering her because. I had to isolate myself and sleep here in this in this room, which has no bed. It's my office. And all I had for a bed was the folding, not even a folding cot, it's a folding chair mm-hmm. that I use in we use in taping. Okay? Mm-hmm. When we have tapings, we, we have well, some of the other guys have beds, but all I have is a chair that folds. Mm-hmm. And so you can imagine the discomfort of spending right. 14 days in one of those. Okay? Right, and right. Neck, <laughs> so I'm, I'm no spring chicken anymore. So <laughs> yeah, 14 days of that, I was suffering. Uh, I wake up with headaches and everything. Right. And so I was, it was really torture, uh, if you can call that torture. Right. But, Two days before I said, okay, she said, just wait the other two days. Let's wait for the 14 days. Right. Very kindly, very patiently dealing with me. So the 14th day comes and it's a relief to be finally get, getting back to bed. But of course, right. we were still pretty cautious. Um, right. I don't go into mom's room because I'm, right. I, I, I'm usually the guy who goes out for the groceries still, right. you know. Um, and so I still want to make sure that uh, I don't bring anything home. Right. Of course. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a so, question though. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Make no, it no, easy. I, I, yeah. Um, it was just very interesting to hear uh, your testimony about you. Um, all of a sudden, God convicting you reading the Bible, and um, and it kind of what triggered it was your experience with uh, the Muslim, you ministering to Muslims, and them throwing you hard questions. Um, uh, I, I'm very interested to know what was the what was the toughest question that you ever got from wow. yeah, from those from the, from yeah. from that experience and uh, yeah. I asked what was you the toughest for an question? question, Ed. <laughs> if, only if you can remember. Only if you, only if you can remember. Uh, there, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of the the, 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 the really tough ones are well because they're coming from a very different paradigm from ours. But uh, so but I guess the, the ones that I would find hard, uh, hard to answer are um, why? How, I, I, they ask you to explain why God, in all his awesome majesty, mm-hmm. wh- how, could, how God could reduce himself to a human form mm-hmm. and walk amongst us okay. and do everything that you and I do as human beings, including go to the bathroom. Okay. Right? So you have to imagine coming from where they're coming from, where God is so yeah. huge. You know, that God would never yeah. think of coming down to earth. They don't know that God comes down to earth in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. In Genesis 3, God is, in, God is walking on the earth. Uh, and in Genesis 18, God has a meal with Sarah and Abraham. Mm. God eats. And God eats beef. <laughs> <laughs> <True>. <laughs> <They eat pork. laughs> 
<laughs> True. <laughs> but a little just, trivia um, there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and so they have no concept of that. They don't know that it's in the Torah. That it's in the Torah because actually their their uh, their Quran teaches that Allah sent down the Torah and the Injil, which is their word for gospel, which actually comes from the Greek word Evangelion, mm-hmm. which is where they get the Injil, Injil and the gospel. So it's, it's how you get that idea across because they have no comprehension of a God of love. It, they just don't get it. And I kind of winced when, uh, when you said ministering to, to the Muslims because w- if you were to ask them, it's not ministry. <laughs> mm. Okay, uh, mm. uh, you, you can go to a hospital and be with a, a grieving spouse or someone who's in the hospital and with cancer, you know, that's ministry. But okay. when it comes to this kind of debate format, it does not come across as ministry because it's very, it's it very, it can be okay. very verbally Heated. aggressive. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Especially with Muslims, yeah. especially with Muslims from the Middle East, the the the, the concept of um, of a weak and mild mannered Christian does not come across mm. very well in the Islamic world because it, it's why are you so weak and nami pami nobody wants that mm. they will reject wow. you they'll shut you down it, it, it's wow. it's got to be a passionate delivery it has to be like great great comfort levels <laughs> yeah yeah uh, the one person of course uh, i never saw him do this in a, again going back to ravi in a in a in a, in a, in a more islamic um, context or in, in a public forum. I don't know if he ever got the chance to do that. But Ravi, in the Western uh, uh, forum, he could be, he would have always very gentle. But when it comes to these kinds of uh, groups, mm, <laughs> it's he was aggressive. very feisty. It's very feisty for us at this level. Okay. It can be very feisty. You have to be used to taking all kinds of abuse. You're called all kinds of names. No? So yeah. uh, it, it is a very specialized field. You have to be very thick skinned to be where we're at. Mm. I never expected mm. I would be doing this almost 11 years now. Wow. <laughs> I'm still here. Uh, but um, it, that it's because they have such a different concept of God. Their God yeah. is very aloof. Mm. He, okay. he has no children. He has no sons or daughters. You're all mm. just slaves. Mm. So yeah. how do you convey that God of love. Right. Mm-hmm. A God who would send his son. The Trinity is another one that blows their minds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's another one. That's a, that's another really hard one. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Would you wow. call yourself Thank an you. apologist now? Mary? Uh, not, certainly not on the left. <laughs> but I do apologetics because um, yeah. I'm defending the faith uh, constantly. But I also do polemics. That's that's the harder part. Mm. Uh, polemics. Would, yeah, polemics would be if you were to militarize the con, uh, the, the concept. It's like the air force. I con, I would say it's the air force preparing. The, it's like shelling with artillery. Okay. Uh, like softening the ground. Uh, preparing. Like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You are softening the ground. You're preparing them for the. The message of love and the crucifixion, and you know, understanding that. But before you can get there, you have to do the polemics, which is aggressive. You're you're attacking what they believe. That's where it gets oh, okay. not very nice, <laughs> yeah, okay. especially okay. from there. Not not, not, not very. <laughs> yeah, because people get their heads chopped off for saying stuff. Oh like yeah, that. for sure. You, can, you yeah. can say anything you want about Allah, but you say anything about Muhammad, you're dead meat. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Jal, you have, Jal, you have anything? Well, if anything, I'm. Uh, what impressed on me the most was how you got to read the Bible. Well, um, more than once in a year, like almost four times, <laughs> and it's very inspiring. Like this, when when the lockdown started here, I was sharing with Ed that I should. Um, because he gave me a new study Bible in NASB version. And um, I told myself that I have no excuse not to finish it. <laughs> Especially, um, I actually lost my job April 15 um, because the nature of my job was in sports. So naturally, um, it just happened. And 
um, given how much time I have, um, there's absolutely no other excuse not to finish it. So, um, yeah, like for, I would, um, he'd sometimes he'd, he'd sleep ahead of me and then the next day he'd be like, what did you do after I sleep? And I said, oh, I finished Zechariah. <laughs> and then, um, it's just much more, um, there's just much more meaning into it. And then now mm. I'm more, um, I'm more um, motivated to actually read Revelations because there's just mm. more that are, um, relevant <laughs> and more more things that we can actually relate to to this day mm. um and then uh like yesterday i was th- the other day i was reading zechariah and i was so surprised to be able to connect it to a lot of the end times and um yeah i i would love to actually try audibly reading it also like what you do like um so i can read it on read and i can also listen to it so right. yeah and if you can do both that would be fantastic I'm a visual person and I'm mm-hmm. a, I'm a reader, mm-hmm. so it's still different. It's still um, there's still much more impact for me if I were to read That's it. That's true. That's true. I think you absorb more than That's just true. hearing. But uh, actually, and so mm-hmm. go ahead. Actually, more than a reader, I think I'm a highlighter. If I don't get to highlight it, it doesn't count me. That's why, like, iPads don't work. It has to be um, an actual, yeah. So Bible Gateway is your answer. You can highlight on Bible Gateway. That's true, though. Yes, yes. But, but I, yes. I, you won't. I will. I keep talking about it every chance I get because mm-hmm. every Christian and I can't. I can't imagine that there was a time when I was saying somebody said we're going to have Bibles in the new in the next life. I said what? Mm-hmm. Why would we have a Bible in the next mm-hmm. life? Mm-hmm. But now, <laughs> right? So you know. But uh, now that uh, I've been going through this, it's become a habit. I haven't actually uh, gotten back to it in a while, but I started the New Testament again. Um, um, I find myself missing the Old Testament when mm. I'm, I'm on the New Testament, oh, like you know, jumping back to the Old Testament. And so, mm-hmm. you, it, it's all, it's amazing, Kase, when you when you see it, um, how it all ties together. You're talking it's about right, yeah. right, over one thousand yeah. five hundred years. How on earth do you do that? I'm a writer. Mm. So it's like, I can appreciate how difficult it is to write one book. Imagine mm. writing 66 and then having everything work mm. together. With so no revisions. <laughs> yeah, no revisions. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Mariam, I'm, I'm curious because you're in show business. And, you know, um, in, in that business, people are, you know, uh, morally flexible, so to speak. So <laughs> how, do you, how do you handle that, that kind of a work environment where, you know, uh, your faith would be certainly tested. Uh, and do you come again. into conflict with people because of your faith and stuff like that? Uh, one of the things that um, my church did way back when I uh, first got the invitation to, because I did not, um, I, did, I was doing commercials when I was a teenager. I got saved when I was 26. Then I started doing the news uh, when I was 29. Mm-hmm. So for the first three years as a Christian, I was r- growing up in a church that was very, very close-minded. Uh, very, very fundamentalist, if I can use the term. Mm-hmm. And so the thought of a Christian being in showbiz was like, no way. Yeah, it's okay? difficult. Yeah. But when I started doing showbiz, I got the invitation to do Vilma, to be a guest on Vilma. I did a teleserie with Vilma. <coughs> Excuse me. And so... Uh, people began to question that. So how can you be a Christian and you're doing these shows? You're singing on Vilma and these, these scantily clad dancers are dancing behind you. <laughs> but um, what the church did, our, our pastors did, was what our pastor did was to uh, have me come before the congregation and send me out as a missionary. So I was like ordained to be, that was my mission yes. field. So uh, it, does, and it wasn't just for the church, you know, the, hey, get off his back because he's going out as a missionary. Yeah. But it was more for me, I guess, to remember that I'm not going out there on my own. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. representing someone. Mm-hmm. So I need to be very careful what mm-hmm. I do, what I say. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I don't laugh at the wrong jokes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Times when mm-hmm. you can fall into that, you know, and I especially. For, for me, uh, when I got saved, I had a really filthy mouth. 
I had a cuss word in the beginning and the end, the middle and the end. Me too, me too. Guilty. And, <laughs> <laughs> but when I got saved that same day, it was gone. So when I walk into the, on the set or you know, the makeup room or the dressing room and the mouths are flying, you know, the, the curses, are, <laughs> it can get really hard. But uh, again, God's grace, I, I, I'm definitely not everything I would want to be as a, a witness for Christ. I mm. fail a lot, but I'm, uh, I'm trying. I'm doing what I can uh, from where I am. At. From where I am, I know I still fail, but God is with me. You're also so, in a in a situation where it's very tricky to remain a Christian. Where, say, for example, uh, this is a very touchy subject, <laughs> um, like uh, the closure of ABS-CBN, and uh, of course, uh, you were working for that. You must have a certain position, and you being also part of the 700 club and you know is there some kind of a conflict a struggle that you go through um you know being uh, in that situation very recently we when we had when we had the, the closure uh the prelude of course to that was that congress had already uh, signaled that they were willing to grant a provisional authority they told the ntc as much they got ntc is the national telecommunication commission that, uh, he, at the Senate, the NPC said, okay, we'll grant them a provisional authority as long as you guys give us the necessary paperwork to back it up. And so we were kind of, okay, looks like we're going to get this. And uh, uh, if I remember correctly, the franchise was expiring May 4th. And, um, and so uh, uh, it was really a surprise when just days, uh, on the day itself, I think May 4th or May 5th, suddenly we hear that the Solicitor General has I uh, had written a letter to the NTC and the NTC totally backflipped and reversed itself and said, no, we're issuing a cease and desist order and not close down the station. So it's like, and I had been very, very confident that we would get the renewal of the franchise. I was not mm -hmm. very happy with Congress because uh, the renewal had been in Congress as early as 2014. And wow. so it makes no sense to me that uh, franchises should continue I'm sorry, I'm going to get political for a while here, but I feel that it gives it leaves too much room for corruption when you have an entire House of Congress that can blackmail essentially any big business that needs a franchise and demand extortionate amounts. Uh, I'm not saying all of them do that. I'm not saying any of them do that, but it just leaves the the, the door wide open for it. And so, 2014 to 2020, and here we are in finally. The franchise is, is expired. And so naturally, um, on the side of us who are employed, we thought gainfully until May 4th, uh, the loss was not a happy one. And so we wanted to express our angst, our uh, difficulty with understanding why people were blaming the station, which really had filed in 2014. So if Congress had refused to act on a, a franchise that you asked for renewal in 2014, why is that the station's fault? It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not a lawyer, but I know some law. And so it didn't make any sense to me that if Congress is the only... Uh, okay, I'm getting too political. But at any rate, so we were all very upset. And we wanted to show our uh, loyalty to the station, which after all had been helping us feed our families and would continue to help us to feed our families despite the fact that um, we were closed. Um, and so um, I put out first a, uh, I admit I was very uncomfortable doing it, a, a very protesting, uh, a, a very, I don't know what you call that. It was a, a sign of protest and as Benji and I were discussing earlier before we started the show I got I guess I should have expected it um, but mm. what was most painful for me was hearing from Christians and, and Christians were questioning my Christianity my walk and then attacking 700 Club it's like mm. why how can you possibly do this uh, uh, Mari I thought you were a Christian I looked up to you and, you shouldn't do this. You have a platform, summer club. You're destroying that, and so 
that was very difficult for me and I was very, very discouraged until the station said, because of what Kim Chu, one of our stars had gone through, uh, the station asked, would you put out a message? Um, uh, would you be willing to do this? Only those who are willing, they said, Only, because we know what it's like if you come out and you defend this station, we know what you're going to get in return. So, so only to those who are willing to do it, would you be willing to stand up and, and express your support for Kim? After all, what was it she said? All she said was, I'm grateful for the, the station that gave me my big break, that helped mm. me to, to keep working so that I could put my four siblings through school. Mm. She was just expressing her gratitude to the station. And so, because she didn't phrase it like, I don't know, the best spokesman in the world, I guess. Um, they attacked her and they pilloried her and she really took a beating until she went off social media altogether because she just couldn't take it. And so I said, this is unfair. And when uh, Boya came out with his, okay, here's mine. I said, okay, I should do it. I, I cannot just not do it. And so I, I, I came out with mine and uh, I cropped the picture that um, I had here. And I said, this is how I know Kim. I said, when I met her, she was, um, and I, I remember distinctly saying to myself, I said, I, I should tell her, I hope that you never change. If you're like this now, you're a huge star now, I hope you never change that you're always like this, that you're so nice and you're so humble, you're not you know, uppity at all, and, and uh, you, made, uh, you make everyone feel at home, you treat everyone the same way. She doesn't maltreat, I never saw her maltreat anyone at all, you know, as huge a star as she was. The, the clincher for me was when her, her van was uh, shot at. Mm. Uh, one taping day, we're all on location, and then we hear that uh, Kim's van has been shot at. And shortly after that, she arrives on the location. She arrives on the on location after her van was shot at. Eight bullet, uh, bullet uh, marks and bullet uh, were wow. in her wow. van. And she told us a story. When she arrived, she was still pretty calm. She said, you know, I was just about to, I decided I'm going to read my script on the way to work. And then I said, oh, you know, I'm, feeling, I'm still feeling sleepy. I think I'll lie down. Because she lay down, she, a bullet just narrowly missed hitting her. Oh, wow. Went through the window where she would have been had she been studying her script. And so at first she was... I think she was in shock. She had no idea what she'd just been through. She didn't, had no idea how close she came to death. But she, the trooper that she is, the, the profession, the true professional that she is, she came to work. If your car was shot at, we'd say, uh, excuse me, my car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody just tried to kill me. Would you guys mind if I don't come to work today? <laughs> but People she have been talking about that. <laughs> Professionalism. <laughs> yeah, you know, because what she, she, her concern was, these guys who had hardly slept, the crew, you know, are there from three o'clock in the morning until they're going to be there till long after we've gone home. She's thinking about them. That's the kind of person she is. She's thinking about all these guys who are, oh, we can't do this now. Now we have to go, all, go home and not get anything done. And she said all about, she was thinking about all of us, all of her other co-stars. You would have wasted their day, you know, showing up and then they don't get to shoot. So... Uh, it showed me what a true professional she was and how uh, how selfless she was. And so how could I not support her, right? Yeah. And so I took the opportunity after um, a couple of paragraphs dealing with her, I said, I took the opportunity of answering uh, the others who had attacked me, including the pastor who said, there was a one pastor, because I, I, I realized that at one point, um, people who were attacking me may not have known that I was not just at seven on at 700 Club Asia on GMA News. I was also doing a teleserie for ABS, uh, the, uh, the opposite uh, network. And so I said, I was directly hit. My family, my little family, small as we are, was directly hit because I lost my job. I'm also, I don't have a show anymore because they closed down the station. So in case you don't understand what we're fighting for, it's that. I lost my job. Okay. So a pastor comes on Facebook and tells me, I, I'm a pastor, Mari, and you're a Christian. You call yourself a Christian. I, I'm, I'm well, sure that, he didn't say, you call yourself a Christian, but he's saying, I'm a pastor, and you, what you need is more faith. That's all you need. It's just more faith. You, know, you should have more faith. That God will take care of you. you know? Just okay. And then they were attacking 700 Club. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be making a political stand because 
it's not right. Um, as a Christian, I should not do this. But I addressed that as well. And I, when I spoke and I mentioned the pastor, I said, when I lost my job, uh, uh, I had also lost uh, um, that chance because we were, we did, I didn't want to announce it to that pastor and say, look, there's other people we're supporting. But I said, I'm not the only one who lost. I said, my family mm. is still eating. But what happens to them? Because ABS got shut down, they stopped making, uh, giving us uh, allowance. They don't have to. You know, they don't have to give us an allowance, but they were doing it. But when, the, when that stopped, I said, I had to stop my support for these, not just six families. Uh, there's a total of eight families that we were helping. Now, I, 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 when I said that, I was just saying, okay, uh, just for you to get a bigger picture, Pastor, that it's not just myself I'm worried about, it's other people. Can you imagine with what little I'm, I'm not, okay, I'm not, I shouldn't say that, with what I'm making, you compare that with what Boyet is making, what Kim Chu is making, and how many more are depending on them. Because all of these guys that I've met are, have the hugest hearts. Many of them have come from you know, uh, not exactly rich backgrounds. So they, they know what it's like to not have money. So when they finally do have money, they'll be the first to dole it out. They'll be the first givers. And most of them will never forget. So when you kill their source of income, you've killed not just the 11,000 who are supposedly employees of ABS, you've killed the many more who are dependent on that 11,000. Wow. So when you, when you, and again, one of the issues I raised was the, the fact that um, uh, people were saying I should not be speaking out because I should not speak out against the government and you're not supposed to speak out against your leader. But I pointed out that that's not, the Bible doesn't say that you lose your human rights the minute you become a Christian. It talks about an attitude you're supposed to have where you honor the authorities above you, but it's not saying that we live in a democracy still. We have not lost our human rights. We have not lost our freedoms of expression and speech just because we became Christians. And the yeah. first to speak out against evil were Jesus and the prophets and the apostles. They didn't just shut up and, okay, let's keep quiet because, you know, mm. That's right. <laughs> Nero was an awful emperor, uh, but uh, Herod, John the Baptist, uh, spoke out against the wrong that was being done. It was immoral. It was being, he spoke out and he got his head chopped off for it, right? Mm. So it's like, um, that's, that's the... That's the paradigm we're supposed to be coming for, from. Is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Christians must stand up for what is right, even when it becomes uncomfortable to do so. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a little bit embarrassed that I thought twice about writing in support of Kim because he said, I was worried about the flag I would get. But guess what? It's probably the most shared and the most commented on uh, post that I've ever had in all of my yeah, life. I should, I should I check. Facebook. People mm -hmm. have just, wow, really? Wow. Shocked yeah. to me, and yeah. people have been really. Uh, the Christians have been coming out uh, and saying, "You're right, Brother Mari. You, should, you took the right stand." Now, I don't know if that's an issue of politics, if they're you know on the other side of politics on this thing, but um, yeah. it's been really encouraging. Yeah. Well, the three of us uh, certainly support you, buddy, <laughs> Thank you, brother. In your position, um, let me just ask you uh, one question, um, and this is relevant to what you just uh, shared with us. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 91, verses 1 to 2, it says here, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I mean, Mary, you've been blessed to be spared from catching the COVID-19 virus, right? In spite of the fact that there was a possibility for exposure with your co-star, uh, Christopher De Leon. Um, there let, were me, let me other... just expand on that just a second, Ben, not to cut you off, but sure, sure. I, I, in this tele area, I play the best friend of Boya. Right. When they put us in our tents together, I'm with Boya. Oh wow! Okay? Wow. So, uh, uh, and the three of us, that the, the, the two others who were complaining, were the three who were in the, in the same tent with Boya. Mm -hmm. Sian Lim, myself, and Boya were in the same in the same oh, tent. Wow. So that's how that really drove this home. It's like, okay, if there's anybody who's going to get sick, it's going to be Mari. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Because you, you you were sharing the same tent. But anyway, um, my question is for people who believe in Jesus Christ, for every believer, or people who have just, you know, recently discovered having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The question becomes then, is it possible for a believer to get sick, to catch COVID-19, to catch a virus, like in the case of Ravi Zacharias, wow. he went through his cancer. Is it possible? Well, if he is my refuge, then why would I have to go through that? Is it possible for me to lose my business because of a possible recession due to this pandemic? Why? You know, what's your take on that, Mari? That's another one of the tough questions. Um, as you can imagine, um, Nabil Qureshi, again, who used to work with with Ravi, uh, come, came out of Islam and he's a Christian apologist and he's doing wonderfully. He's brilliant, he's articulate. The guy had a double PhD as far as I know. Mm -hmm. He had a double doctorate. And he had a medical doctor and a PhD, sorry, there we go. He's a medical doctor and he's also a, although I might, I might still be right on that. He might have had a double PhD. Anyway, uh, he's brilliant and then he gets struck down with cancer again, stomach close to uh, mm -hmm. his condition. And then just what, four years later, we lose Ravi. So, so everyone's <laughs> wondering what's going on. But uh, like you said, like you're saying, um, uh, when I lost my job uh, in 2007, and I thought I was being you know, confident, completely confident in the Lord. But I wasn't being confident in the Lord. I was being confident in my flesh. I was confident in the reputation I had established after 18 years. Somebody's going to hire me. And no one ever hired me from the major networks. Um, and so, and then, uh, uh, and so I feel what God was doing there was not just changing my directions, but humbling me, teaching me things that I would never learn had I continued working elsewhere. Mm. The lessons that you learn, the deepest lessons that you learn mm -hmm. are the most painful ones. Mm. Uh, mm. Someone like Ravi, um, of course, he, what, 74 years was it for Ravi? Mm -hmm. um, he, he done so much in ministry, and you get sick and you say, okay, if God is going to take me, I've done so much. And there's so much I've already accomplished. We look at people as young as Nabi and say, okay, so he, he had so much ahead of him. Of course, God only, God only knows why he took them so, both of them, really, so early. I was praying for Ravi, God to give Ravi another 15 years, you know, Hezekiah's time. But um, mm. uh, for, for us who are still here and are struggling with situations like Jell, who, who lost her job, saying, you know, why would I lose my job at this time? And <laughs> the good news, Jell, is that you're not the only one, right? Right now, there's a whole bunch of us who are, who are out of jobs. But the, the good news is that there are so many other things that are opening up. There are so many other fields. There are so many other things we can do. Like you said, you can focus on reading your Bible and getting into your the word so much more during this time while you're waiting for God to open up that job for you. Um, uh, Which he did business. today, by the way. Oh, oh hallelujah. There's, there's, a <laughs> there's a praise report. There's a praise report right there. Yes. God is good. Uh, maybe same. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, uh, there's uh, there's a, a business report I was just reading. I, don't, I failed to remember where. Uh, and it's pointing to... Uh, the businesses that will do well coming out of COVID. Uh, mm. I mean, look at, uh, real estate, real estate says um, it's going to be a buyer's market for a while. There's so many things. Uh, if you're if you're prepared to listen um, to to what the Lord has for you, then your opportunities opportunities will open up, and you, you begin to get uh, less of a of, ton, of a tunnel vision about things. Mm. Um, I was really stuck for the longest time. I like, God, you have to put me back in news. You have to do this. How else will I provide for this family? But God said, no, no, I don't have to do it. <laughs> 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 I'm in control here, not you, okay? Said, oh, man, that was so tough. It was so hard. So, again, uh, he'll use circumstances like this to, to humble us, to remind us who's really in control. And at the same time, it's it's a it's a, an experience that you you'll never forget. Okay. You learn so much from it. Okay, uh, real quick, um, Jill. Let me just jump into what 
he would the sh- the praise and wor- I mean the praise and worship yeah. rather the praise report that that you just mentioned about mm-hmm. you know uh, having a job being, having a new job being mm-hmm. hired uh, for mm-hmm. a new job so h- when did you lose your job exactly April fifteen April fifteen yes okay all right and, and then yeah just today <laughs> and, and just today um, you got a call you received a call. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 uh, I would say six week. Um, wow. Work, <laughs> yes. But wow. um, I was very grateful to the Lord because I felt like um, two two things were involved in the way He gave this to me. One was humility. The other mm. one was surrender. Um, mm-hmm. When I was looking for a job, I was I was ready to actually explore industries that I have never been in Mm -hmm. like from digital and advertising i was trying to try like banking um Mm -hmm. other it um from where i was coming from that's really an uncomfortable um, industry for me right right. and then i had to be open to actually applying for jobs that were two levels down my previous role so that's Mm -hmm. how much um i guess humility that the lord was actually expecting from me Mm-hmm. Um, to actually be prepared for that, but um, the Lord was amazing. Um, uh, the the paper isn't there yet because <laughs> I only got the offer call. But I guess it's um it's I could actually officially say it that um what they actually applied for was um uh, an associate role, and then after three interviews, they gave me um uh, a a a, a, a head role. I I'm a oh. head of business development. They created wow. a role for me. Basically, wow. so in the call, I was like, "Wow!" It was really. I think the Lord just wanted me to actually like dive onto real humility and surrender. And then, if it's the role that He was going to give me, I was ready to get it. And then, right in the middle of the call, that's when they started saying, uh, yeah, "There's actually this is actually different from what we have been talking about in the past two interviews." And then, so this one, so. so yeah, it's um fresh from the Lord's grace today. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, it's it's um I'm very happy. I'm very happy about it. And he he brought me to an industry that I'm very comfortable in. So mm. still digital marketing right. related. Okay. And um it's 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 a blessing. Uh yes. <laughs> God is so, good. Like, yes, mm. yes. Actually yeah. I have one I, I have one last question to Sir Mary, if I may. Um, sure. don't don't call him sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't give he didn't give us that uh <laughs> I told you don't call me sir. I mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I guess my last question is um given that you've read the the Bible many times also and um you've on you've studied the context as well. Um I know um it's uh, it's a lot of people, and maybe I also, um, would sometimes uh, mistakenly pick verses um, out of context sure. in con- uh, conveniently. Um, I guess with everything that's happening now, what verse would you be holding on to? Like people losing their jobs, future being so um, we don't know if how how near the end is, or um, there are a lot of uncertainties now more than ever. So which one verse would you um, be holding on to these days? I just did a, uh, a video for, for, for CBM. And uh, again, I spoke a little bit about getting into the word, but I guess the one that we really need to learn is First John 4, God is love. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, I know it's just a part of the verse, but... Mm-hmm. Until you grasp that God is love, mm-hmm. you go back to Fendi's question, which is, how can you deal with everything that's going on? Mm-hmm. You, it's it's a, it's a, the concept of the fatherhood of God is important enough as it is, but this is not just any father. This is a loving father who is love. Mm-hmm. He, he is not just he's not loving, just loving. He is love so everything he does in your life is out of love mm. <laughs> i'll tell you it shouldn't feel that way when i lost my job okay mm. <laughs> it's okay you know mm-hmm. how can you do this yeah. you love me Where, where's my paycheck I, I want my every mm. i want that paycheck and it's gone and i have to figure out where it's going to come from and i i i'm i've done, i tried everything it's okay 
it's baby steps of understanding how that God of love can get you through a, an impossible situation. There's so many times it felt so impossible. Yet looking back now, that was 2007, that was 13 years ago. We're still eating. <laughs> we have a roof over our heads. We're enjoying air conditioning. It's like, I have a car, two cars. You know, it's like, what am I? Okay, fine, the car's 10 years, no, more than 10 years old. But still, you know, it's functional, it's working. So who am I to complain? God is, because uh, I've come to understand that God is love, it's easier. Not, not that I'm saying I'm perfect by no means. What I'm saying is that it becomes easier to take the, the hits when they come. Mm-hmm. When, when, when the enemy attacks, okay, mm-hmm. wait, just a second. Okay, okay God, is, God is doing something. What is God doing? Mm-hmm. So, Affirmation it, it from a uh, listener saying, God will provide from Danny Fernandez. Uh, he's, he's had several comments here, actually. Uh, saying, yes, things will open up in times like this. Also asking, is there a Christian TV station in the Philippines? Yes, we've got Mari here hosting one. <laughs> um, it's a 700 Club, you know, and they've got so many stories of faith there. It's, it's, it's 700 Club Asia. Asia, Asia yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we actually don't have a Christian network in the Philippines. We don't even have a conservative uh, yeah. network in the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't have any station that I know of that is anywhere close to being um, what one could call a well. There's uh, there's probably light uh, network, brother Eddie Villanueva's uh, uh, TV uh, station, but um, so I guess yeah. Sorry, you have Looking light twenty four hours, right? No, absolutely not twenty four hours, but. Um, um, what was the other question? Was there another question? Um, uh, Christian streaming service. No, but um, we're, trying, I've been we're quick. trying to start one here. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Well, yeah, we're trying to start one here. <laughs> that would be great, yeah. yeah. Maybe we could work together and all together. Uh, right. Put, yeah. You know. There you go. <laughs> Networking, man, that's the... That's the yeah. Thing. yeah, true. That's true. This content right. is still key. <laughs> yep, mm-hmm. correct. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, parting words before we end. Uh, let's start with, of course, our special guest, Mary Kaimo. Well, I just want to thank you for the opportunity, for the privilege of uh, sharing this time. I'm excited for you guys because this is such a fantastic pioneering step. And I know this is only going to be the first of a number of uh, great shows you're going to have. You're going to have great guests, I'm sure of it. Uh, I won't drop any names now. <laughs> <laughs> it's still gonna have to work on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's true. Them. Yeah. <laughs> but if you ever need, uh, Angie, uh, knows yeah. how to reach me. If you ever want, you know, maybe sure. one of the, some of the other guys at Sarah yeah. Club, anyone I can reach. I'm hey, I'm here for you, bro. Your your, your co-host is a cousin of ours. Um, Which one? Camilla. Camilla. Oh, Kim. really? Yes, she's oh. the first cousin of my wife. I don't oh, know okay. if I, I remember. I don't know if I remember telling you that. Before. No, you've never told me that before. Okay, all right. Yeah. So well, is she going to be next? <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> it's her birthday today. Yeah, it is her birthday Happy today. Birthday. It was her birthday. Happy birthday, Camila. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, so yeah. Okay. Um, Ed, you look like an a- astronaut, by the way, with the background <laughs> and with your hoodie on. That's, that's the idea. Uh, with your hoodie up. <laughs> Yeah, your parting words. words. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. To to whoever is uh, tuning in, um, I think you've heard a lot about um, God blessing some of the individuals here, um, graciously getting a new job and um, just the just the, all of the provisions. Um, but if you're tuning in and you feel like and you know that you have nothing, maybe, and you're just struggling, know that God still loves you. Um, and, uh, our purpose here in life is not to, our our purpose here on earth is not to have, um, a convenient, comfortable life. He has actually, the gospel has actually called us to, to really follow our, our, follow our savior, our shepherd. And, um, he had a rough life here on earth for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of his message of love to each and every one of us. And I think. One of the things I just want to share really quick that I really praise God for um, 
is that he has uh, given us this opportunity, me and Jel, to, to kind of minister to the delivery drivers. Mm. So what we do now when we request for like a when we request mm-hmm. Grab or Mr. Speedy for delivery, we would be intentional to get there to text these drivers and to to ask them how we can pray for them. Right. Um, and to give them a message of hope that um, wherever they're at, um, if they give their lives to the Lord and put their hope in the Lord and trust in the Lord, they can have peace, joy, and everlasting life. And our life here on earth is is fleeting. It's but a breath mm. compared to eternity. So um, if you're tuning in, uh, whatever you have, if you feel like God is not blessing you, that's not the point. Um, just know that God loves you and he wants to really show you um, to what extent, the, mm. the, the, the extent of his love for you. And I would encourage you to, like all of us here, open your Bible, read it, make it your goal to read it. Uh, read everything in a year. Uh, Jel's doing that. He's reading the whole Bible for the first time. Like, <laughs> so um, I would encourage you to open up his word, read it every day. Now is the best time to do it. We have yeah. nothing to do. Well, not really. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I would encourage you with that. All right. Thank you so um, much, Ed. Jill, your turn. Um, for me, uh, I'm I'm so blessed to be on the front seat today, actually listening as an audience to what Sir Mari has been sharing with us. I would say my best. Don't call thing- him Sir Mari. That's strike two. <laughs> I'm, so ju- I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so hard. Um, I would say uh, to uh, I learned how to turn and uh, to turn challenges into opportunities. The way you have been questioned many times, and I, I suppose those had those had put you in a very difficult position, mm. but you won. Um, used it as an opportunity to. Uh, to learn and to know firsthand, not to ask for an answer from someone else. And the next is to use it as an opportunity to actually share the gospel. So the more engagement, whether it be good, whether it be bad or hard, um, let's just keep using it as an engagement to to share. And I know there are a lot of um, paid people to engage, <laughs> I could say, online. <laughs> so if, you know, if the more interaction we get to, the, to them to, to just keep sharing the gospel, then um, as they could be continuously paid for what they're doing to engage, but we are also paid by the Lord to continuously engage for them to share the gospel. Maybe that's something that we can um, do now. And I'm so inspired by how you spit, how you spawn the situation into something that is uh, a blessing into sharing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Elaine? Well, yeah, wow. Well, um, it's been a great evening. Um, and uh, talking about Psalm 91, um, I remember Christ when he was being tested, uh, the devil himself quoted Psalm 91 mm-hmm. to Jesus. And, and, and Jesus during that time was going through uh, a rough time because he was being tested. And that goes to tell you that Psalm 91 is not about having um, an absence of trouble, but rather um, having a refuge and, and, and a shelter from the Lord in your times of trouble. And mm-hmm. from, what the, from what we have heard from the Mary's testimony this evening, uh, is that uh, that's the way it is, and uh, and you can be assured of the refuge from the Lord, what if, whatever trouble you're going through in life, especially now. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, um, great to have you here, Mary, and uh, to our Thank listeners, you. Uh, maybe you can join us next time. Maybe uh, ask more questions if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, of course, um, lastly, I just like to um, share something. Uh, but before that, I'd like to, uh, in relation to what Jell, uh, to Jell's question about, you know, what's what's the verse that resonates most to you at this particular time? I think that one verse for me, or two verses, as a matter of fact, uh, it comes from John six, verse sixty-eight to sixty-nine. Oh, that's uh, very uncommon. Yeah, you know, it says <laughs> uh, Peter uh, responds to Jesus because Jesus was asking because like. The context of the whole, you know, uh, the whole passage was that there were disciples who were abandoning Jesus. 
uh, because they didn't they didn't like his teaching. So Jesus turned to Peter and Peter goes uh, and asked Peter the question, what about you? What about all of you? Are you going to do the same thing? Are you going to follow the same? The you want to go away as well. Yeah, uh, the same the same initiative uh, and, and, and straight away as well. So Peter immediately responded. And, and it, this always resonates to me. Every time I go through trials uh, during the time when I transitioned from moving from the Philippines to the United States, this was the two ver these were the two verses that really uh, helped me, you know, keep my sanity or maintain my sanity uh, and my spiritual walk. The, the, uh, the words of Peter were, Lord, where else would we go? You are the Holy One of God. Where else would we go, Lord? You are the Holy One of God. And I hope that those of you are listening today and those of you are losing hope, as uh, Elaine and Ma Mari mentioned earlier, just, you know, just because the Bible says he is our refuge doesn't mean we won't have to go through any trials. Doesn't mean we won't have to lose our jobs or catch a virus or uh, suffer cancer. But the main thing is that he will always be there to provide us with comfort to provide us with support. He is all in for all of us. You know, he is all in. So where else would you go? He is the Holy One of God. And before I go, let me just uh, read a quote from a para paraplegic author. And I'm sure Mari is familiar with, with her. <laughs> Joni Erickson Tada. She said, and this is a paraplegic, a paraplegic uh, author, by the way. So he, she said, sometimes God permits what he hates and uses it to accomplish what he loves. Oh. All right. So like, you know, just uh, a little testimony before we go. Elaine, myself, and Ed, we've been talking about this for the past three, five to three years, three to five years. Wow. We've been talking about doing something like this. We didn't know how to do it. We, I had the equipment. In fact, there was a time when my wife, because I purchased the equipment ahead of time, my wife was telling me, why don't you sell it on Craigslist? You know, because it's not, it's just sitting in there, you know? <laughs> so, so when I was telling Elaine about it, and, but my response always was, no, it will serve its purpose one of these days. And it did. And it happened at such a time as this, Right. So we may have been going through the pandemic, but the Lord opened doors yes. for us to be able to do something of this nature. So guys, never lose hope. Amen. You know, Amen. where else will we go? He is the Holy Amen. One of God. Amen. So until next week, um, that's uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 10, 10 a.m. Central Time, and 8 a.m. Pacific in the United States, 11 p.m. in the Philippines, and 4 p.m. in the UK, the Roof Chamber Radio. Thank you so much, Mary, for being part of our show. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You, Thank you very God much, Mary. You Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, and we're up there.